Hi again, everybody. Benita Hutchison here with your health podcast. Today, I want to talk about being sick of being tired. Fatigue is a common problem in our society, even though we have all kinds of technology that's supposed to save us time and energy. All it's done is cause us to ramp up what we think we can accomplish in a day. I think there's several things that really contribute to fatigue not being in touch with our bodies, not being in touch with our hearts, and not being present in time. We drag our bodies willy-nilly through all kinds of experiences every day. We don't feed ourselves when we need to eat. We don't rest when we need to rest. And those are the sorts of things you really want to pay attention to. Notice when there's just even a little bit of fatigue. What is your body asking for in that moment? Do you need a 10 minute cat nap? Do you need to stop and eat something? Drink some water, take a break. Can you give yourself that? We are so much more productive when our day is peppered with those little breaks, taking time to breathe, taking time to have a little bit of a rest. There is a lot of very creative people in the world who've come up with amazing inventions and ideas. And they'll often talk about how Taking 10 minute cat naps helps their brain to process information, come up with a solution that they're then able to apply. So think about that. Are you pushing, pushing, pushing when sometimes you need to just stop and go, hey, I'm stepping away from this for a few minutes. I'll either take a walk or I'll lay down. I'll come back to it with a fresh mind. Stop pushing yourself to constantly do more without ever taking a break. Our bodies aren't designed that way. If we look back at the agricultural days, if we look back at people before machines ran our lives, we might get up early in the morning and go feed the goats and then come back in and have a relaxing breakfast and then go out and work the fields. And you know, maybe if it's a hot afternoon, we take a little break, have a nap, wait till it cools off a bit, go back out, do some more work outside. In fact, traditionally, people often didn't sleep eight hours through. They would sleep part of the night, they would get up, they would tend to the animals or tend to other things, they would go back to sleep for a while. Lives were really dictated by the rhythms of nature. And now it's as though we all feel like we have to get sleep in a certain portion of the day or the night. Um, and often not enough sleep. And then we just have to keep going all day. We have to be productive. And ultimately we're actually less productive when we're fatigued. We aren't thinking as clearly as we could. We're dragging ourselves into meetings and nodding through them. We're not well rested. We're not as efficient as we could be. We're not as creative as we could be. So pay attention. What does your body need right now? Do you need to take a 10 minute break? Um, when I was a mature student going to university while raising four kids, um, the way I would study, I would always look at my materials for maybe 15 to 30 minutes tops, take a 15 minute break, then come back to it. Your mind needs time to process the information it's taking in. You get stuck on an idea. Some of the most creative people in the world swear by 10 minute cat naps, lay down for 10 minutes. Let your mind process the information you're taking in at the subconscious level, where often the solutions lie. Let the solution come to the surface, wake up and work with it. There have been times where I've had a workshop to run and I'm putting the materials together and suddenly I'm really seized with the desire to sleep. I'll lay down, sometimes for a few hours. I wake up, everything I needed for the workshop is right there, ready to go on the paper. So realize that your natural rhythm, your natural processes, they, they aren't eight hours straight of this and then do that. It, there's a, there's a, a ebb and flow. There's times of the day where we have a lot of energy. Plan for the most important tasks when your energy levels are at their highest. There's times to rest, take a little break. Then after that siesta, Go back into the work you need to do. Do your best to organize your life around your natural rhythms. 
get in touch with your body and what it says it needs. Getting in touch with your heart means listening in. What is their energy for in terms of my interactions with others? Do you should yourself? Do you say, I should really call that family member or that friend because if I'm a good person, I'll do that. But if in your heart, it doesn't really feel like it's time, it doesn't feel right, you're working against your intuition. You're working against your emotional intelligence and it'll cost you energy wise. You won't feel good afterwards. You'll feel drained. It'll be like, well, I did that. Didn't really want to, but I did it. It's not going to feel like you've really been present in that situation because you were just trying to get it over with. Can you imagine if you called a family member and said, yeah, I don't really want to talk to you right now. I don't really feel like it, but I'm doing it because I think I should, because I think it makes me a good person if I do. <laughs> what an insult to the people that we're interacting with. If we are um, doing something because we feel duty bound or we're trying to shore up our sense of ourselves, don't do that. Pay attention. If there's no energy to actually reach out to that person at that time, trust that. Maybe they've got something else going on in their life right now and you're not supposed to be a part of that. Maybe you've got some shifting to do before you're ready to talk to them and they're ready to talk to you. Again, it's trusting the pattern and the order of things. When it feels like it's time to reach out to somebody, reach out. And if it's somebody that normally you don't have a good experience with, you're drained after talking to them, maybe you want to check in as to whether you're supposed to interact with them at all, or do you need to change how you interact? So for example, if there's somebody in your life that it's important to you to interact with, but they tend to pull on your energy a lot, call them up and say, um, just wanted to give you a quick call. You know, I've only got about 20 minutes here, but I wanted to reach out to you today. And then after about 15 minutes, say, I've got to go in about five minutes. So, you know, let's just, you know, wrap up our conversation. I'll look forward to talking to you again. And then when you hit that five minute mark, if they're still talking, that's when you say, sorry, I really got to go. Love you lots. I'll talk to you soon. And you hang up. Boundaries. So often we lose energy because we have poor boundaries. And really it is true that we teach people how to treat us. So if we say, here's my energy, you can have all the energy you want and I will let you have it. And then I'll just secretly resent you afterwards. It's not healthy. It's not fair to them. It's not honest. It's not fair to yourself. So build those connections around a certain parameter of time. If you're out visiting and you start to lose energy, there's nothing wrong with saying, you know what? I'm, I'm getting tired. I really need to go home and have a nap. Um, I, I'm going to, you know, say goodbye now because you know, I, I, I'm just finding I'm feeling a little fatigued. It doesn't have to be about them. It might just be that that's what your body needs right now. There's nothing wrong with paying attention to your body and listening. And astute people will notice you're losing energy, but they're trusting you to say when you're done, when you need to end things. Sometimes you'll go to some gathering and just the energy is wrong. Maybe the people there are running different patterns than you do and it feels jarring. There's nothing wrong with saying, I've had a lovely time, great visit, but I need to head home early tonight. You know, we don't have to explain things to everybody. We can just show that we're listening to ourselves and good friends will understand that they'll accept it. They won't push you to stay longer. And that's by the way, how you find out who your real friends are. Do people support you? to take care of yourself or do they demand more from you? Pay attention to that. That's another good way of getting your energy back. Noticing who you're spending time with, how they're interacting with you. And if it isn't respectful, either disconnecting from those people or modifying how often and how you interact with them. For example, if you get together with somebody who you love them dearly, but they do tend to take your energy Get there on your own steam, take your own vehicle. So when you need to go, you can go. Don't put yourself in situations where you're beholden to others to acknowledge you when you say, I need to go. Self-care. Not being present in time. This is huge. 
so often I call it adding pain to our pain. We get up in the morning, we have our list of to do's and then we start to go, okay, I've got to get all this stuff done for tomorrow. Usually that's not reasonable. We usually really pile on ourselves a ton of stuff to do much more than we can accomplish in a day. And then we beat ourselves up for not getting it all done. Be present. Do what you can in the present moment, rest when you're supposed to, and let go of what you couldn't get done today. Make sure the things that are the highest priority are your first focus. It's very easy to distract ourselves with, well, I'll just go do this now, even though it's not as important, it's not as time dependent, and then it's the end of the day and we're stressed because we didn't get the really important stuff done. So. Write down your list of to-dos, put the stuff at the top that's most important, focus on that, get it done first, because then you have freed up energy by getting something accomplished. It feels good to get something accomplished. It gives you energy to do that. Now you have more energy for the other things you need to do, but let go of what doesn't get accomplished. Trust that it will on another day. We try so hard to be so productive. Sometimes we have to ask ourselves, did I commit to too much? Do I need to let go of that commitment? Do I need to be willing to disappoint somebody? Because it's the healthiest thing for me to do. People will generally understand if you say, you know, I'm sorry, I took this commitment on. I now realize it's too much. I have to modify it or I have to give it to somebody else. Ultimately, you want to take care of your health. And I'm speaking as somebody that ended up with an illness a few years ago that fatigued me so much. There would be afternoons where I'd be curled up in my papa's on chair, trying just to get the energy to open my eyes. At that time in my life, I needed two or three naps a day. I started taking all the right supplements, doing everything I could for my body, went into remission, got healthy. But at that time, those naps were essential. My body was trying to fight a disease. It was absolutely necessary that I sleep that much. Listen to your body, listen to your heart, be present. As soon as you start to stress over what you're not getting done, you're already in the future. You're not in the present moment. Stay present. What needs to be done in this moment? What needs to be done for my body? What needs to be done for my emotional well-being? What needs to be done so my mind can just focus here? You will be amazed by how much energy you will liberate by being present in the moment, taking care of yourself, and doing just what really needs to be done and let the rest go. Tomorrow's another day. You have no idea what that day is going to bring up for you, how things might shift and change. Let go, let go, let go. Keep your energy for the present. Don't waste it on a future that hasn't shown up yet. Thanks very much for showing up for me, everybody. I am glad to see you again, and I look forward to visiting with you at my next podcast. Bye for now.